When designing characters for animated projects, there are a ton of different approaches that you can take. And for Rocket Randy, I actually just did a very straightforward approach. I worked directly in Photoshop and I used a really basic brush and just started drawing. I didn't go through the thumbnailing process. I didn't do a lot of experiments. I didn't do a lot of photograph research for this character. So before I go too much into why Rocket Randy was designed the way he is, what I'd like to do is just focus on how to create a really fast, basic brush that you can draw with quickly without having things slow down because the brush is too complicated. One of the common challenges with bitmap based cutout animation in After Effects is that the layers oftentimes have to be quite large because they're accommodating a number of different camera positions. So I may use the same puppet for a wide shot as I might use for a close up. So oftentimes the actual puppet composition itself gets quite big. It typically isn't smaller than 2000 pixels wide by 5000 pixels high for a human. There's a lot of space being covered in the composition. So the bigger the composition gets, I find that the slower the brushes tend to run and even even with small brushes, like little pen tips and everything like that, if you start adding a lot of the bells and whistles that Photoshop offers you to make the brush look really realistic, again, you get some major slowdown, especially when you're doing cross hatching, which is one of the techniques I use a lot in my drawings, is I use lots of little tiny lines to create the shading. And with a complicated brush, I'll be doing these lines, I'll be moving really fast, but what will happen is the lines will go further and further behind my brush strokes and I'll have to wait for the lines to catch up, which can be really counterintuitive. So the point of this lesson is to show you how I solved that problem by creating a very basic brush that I can move quickly with and yet still get a convincing handmade result. Now in Photoshop, there's all kinds of interesting brushes that you can use. The problem with the more realistic brushes, um, if you go into some of these more, I have tons and tons and tons of brushes. But if you go into more some of the more realistic brushes, when you start getting very large compositions and things start getting complicated, they really do slow down. If you're trying to do really fast sketch lines like I'm doing here, I find there's a huge delay. So one of the key things I found is working with really basic brushes whenever you can. For my style of line making, and it actually works out just fine. So oftentimes to start, if I was to create a new brush, I start with just one of the basics. Let's just zoom in on this here, this one, which is a pretty horrendous brush. When you look at it, you can see all the stepping and everything. It's because my flow is so low. Um, if you don't understand these terms like flow and opacity, flow is the amount of ink essentially coming through the brush. If the flow is low, you will see more of the texture that makes up the brush. Um, it's sort of like if your, your ink was drying out. And opacity is a little bit different because opacity maintains the line quality, but it just becomes more transparent. So you reduce the flow, you actually get ga you get more texture in the actual brush stroke. As you can see, it's not as solid. The big thing about th with a brush is I'm going to put everything to 100% first. And that's how I want to work. Is You have to decide what your look wants to be. And for me, I want to have a semi-realistic ink t tip. Kind of like a semi-realistic pen ink tip going on. So I think the first step in doing that is maybe going to grab an actual sketch and having a look at what a pen or ink stroke actually looks like. Okay, so to get a sense of how uh, an actual ink stroke would look it, with the kind of pen I'd like to emulate, I've pulled up a painting slash drawing that I did a while ago, and I don't want to emulate this watery stroke here because that's that's not what I'm going for right now. I want more of these these strokes here that you can see these little dashes. Anyways, you can really see what's going on with the line. And as you see, as the pen is getting drier or I'm not pressing as hard, it's really breaking up. So the trick is to see if you can simulate this kind of a stroke with as little advanced features as possible so that the brush stroke can move quickly. Because right now with a brush stroke with very little going on, I can move real time. I'm getting those strokes right away. But as the brush gets more complicated, that slows down. And the big reason for this is because I tend to work in very large images. This one's 5,000 by 6,000. Even Rocket Randy here, he is, for all his pieces, he's 5,000 by 5,000. So they're not little, and it's so that you can get up close to them because the characters often serve for more than one shot and angle. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we can do with this brush here. Uh, this is a really basic brush, but what I want to do is definitely get some some features going on. So I want to get some shape dynamics for sure, and I want to base that off the pen pressure. 
Now, I don't want to go right down to this tiny skinny thing because it never happens when I'm using a pen. I mean, I can't seem to ever get a pen to really do that. So initially, I'm going to increase that pen diameter. So as you can see, even in my finest strokes with this pen, it really doesn't get that small. So I'm going to try to emulate what's going on here relatively closely. Okay, there we go. We're out. Okay, so we're off to a start here. Let's create a new layer. All right, now the next thing is we have sort of emulating the fatness a little bit. Maybe it needs to be a little bit fatter. If I'm pressing super light, there we go. And then this is a harder press. All right, and I'm getting an okay tail on it too. So as the, as the pressure goes down, I get a better tail. Okay, so the next thing to add is what you might think to be texture but I texture really slows things down. So I'm gonna leave that. So one way that we can achieve some variation in the actual texture of this brush, you can use a roundness jitter. That gives you a little bit of inconsistency. The other thing you wanna do sometimes is decrease your spacing, especially if you're going to be using some, let's say a lower flow rate. So let's really drop the flow down because I do wanna get a sense of the being slightly transparent. So. As you can see here, with the flow rate down and the brush spacing being 17%, you can see these very clear, almost square shapes. And that's where the actual uh, brush is overlapping on itself. So it's sort of doing this stacked thing. To get rid of that, you really have to reduce the spacing. Keeping in mind, the closer your spacing is together, the slower the brush will actually work. So let's put, this, let's put the opacity up a little bit. Now the goal is not to like make the brush stroke look exactly like a pen when you're really close to it because we're never going to be that close to it. That's at least that's not in the plan. So we have some of this. We can change the brush tip shape so it's not a perfect circle. And if you change the brush tip to shape so it's not perfectly circular, you can actually change the angle and get a pretty jagged noisy edge, which may seem seem like it's the way pens work, but they don't really work, at least not at that level. If we were to compare the strokes here, there's way too much going on on the edge of this brush. So let's reduce that angle jitter. I don't even know if we need it in all honesty. This looks more accurate like this. And the other trick is, is you wanna see how it looks when you start reducing your pen pressure. So maybe let's try and find a stroke that has some uh, some of these are, a lot of these aren't ink strokes. Let's actually go to another another picture. See if we can find one. This is a little bit of a drier paper. So we need to start getting a bit of a, more of a breakup, but we're starting to get a bit of a breakup in the brush there. So another thing we can do is, uh, obviously we can hit up texture. Um, texture, you can apply any kind of a paper texture, anything you like to it, and it will actually transfer onto the brush. However, it can be performance expensive but this is actually working pretty well let's increase the scale a bit I, mean, I don't really love that brush at the moment i'm still getting a lot of weird straight lines i don't like those like if you look close at this getting these horizontal lines i don't like that i think that's coming from the paper texture itself so this is probably a better no i don't like those straight lines at all let's get rid of those I'm going to turn the texture off and see if I'm still getting those. I'm still getting those. I think those are a flowing issue. Um, yeah, I don't like those straight lines. So let's go back to the brush tip shape. That's okay. Shape dynamics, angle jitter zero. Let's turn the roundness jitter off and see if we still get that weird. No, okay. We're, we're It's the roundness jitter that's causing the problem. So let's try increasing the angle jitter to actually get the shape shift that we need. There we go. That's a little better. But I don't want it to look like brown balls there we go that's looking a little better if we go nice and light on our stroke so the goal here is to eventually get it to look a little more broken up i find scattering slows things down a ton so i don't typically use that so the other thing we can do is actually use a dual brush and if you grab a dual brush one thing i have tried is using this um, this guy right here like this little oval brush and increasing the spacing and you can see what starts happening. It's actually, it doesn't make sense at first. It took me a long time to understand actually what was going on with the dual brush. And it's using the brush as sort of an alpha channel. But I'm just going to space them apart. And you can start to see what happens as I space this guy out. You can see the individual brush brushes if I increase the count. But um, 
if you increase the scattering, it changes how often they happen. If you decrease the size, they almost disappear. And so it's it's sort of adding to the brush a little bit. So I'm gonna reduce the size quite a bit and then decrease the spacing a bit and play with this. So you see what's happening now? And that's a really, this is already a more interesting type of stroke and that is a super simple brush. Like there's so little going on with that brush that I can move very quickly. I think it's a little too much. Let's reduce the scattering on that. So it's a little, it's a little bit too much, uh, too much texture going on, but it's still working pretty well. So you can just adjust it until you're getting something. I mean, it's not really an exact replica of the pen stroke, but it's still, still pretty good. Like it's, it's definitely a more interesting textured stroke. And if I were to pull way back and look at this, I don't have a hard, I don't have a really hard time believing that that's actually a stroke. Obviously the color's off. So maybe if we grab the color of the brush here, you know, the goal is to just get something that sort of looks right. Like you can see from further away, it actually doesn't look bad at all. It almost, it almost blends into the whole thing. It's actually not too bad. So, I mean, and we can try reducing the flow and see what that looks like. And this is a super fast brush. Like one of the reasons I need fast brushes is because I actually do a lot of cross hatching. And if I'm cross hatching and my brush is too complicated, it's too slow and I'm doing all these strokes and my brush just falls way behind and I can't really get the look I'm going for. Okay, so we do have we do have a pretty a pretty good brush stroke happening here. Obviously it's not perfect, but it is such a basic brush. I, I think it's it's a pretty great start. Let me decrease the spacing a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna press really light. Now, the last thing, let's, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to, we can go to the transfer dynamics. And when I do transfer, that is a level of pressure that's required to create op opacity, right? What you can do is you can either do an opacity, but I am actually going to go pen pressure off. And what I'll do is a f I'm going to do a flow pressure instead. So this, the lighter that you press your pen, the, the thinner the flow is. So if I go really thin, really light, I'm gonna get a light flow, so there'll be a lot more breaking up of the line. And then if I push really hard, it'll it'll be more solid, that's all. You can also add a flow jitter to it, and flow jitter is just sort of randomizes the flow a little bit. So let's say, for instance, I put the flow to 100%, and let's put this from multiply to normal, because I'm losing, I'm losing the effect a little bit. So I'm gonna put the brush to full black, so I can see what's going on. So this is a hard stroke, this is a really light, I'm getting progressively lighter here. And you're seeing how the line sort of breaking up because of the flow. It works pretty good. And it's not, again, it's not perfect. I mean, it's not bad. It's really not bad. It's, it's not. You could probably, on the dual brush, increase the spacing a little bit more. Anyways, I think I'm pretty happy with that line. I think I'm going to go with this and just use this one because from far away it looks great. I'm not going for absolute realism here. I'm just going for something that when you look at it, it feels more natural and it moves fast. You can achieve more realistic ink strokes and stuff like that. But again, the cost of your processing speed, that's the concern. If you're working nice and small, it's it works great. But if you're working big like I do, it's not advisable. After that, you really just have to add your brush. And I'm going to call this like ink medium dry all right so that is how the brush that was used to sketch out rocket randy was made i hope that was of some use to you if not there's a whole bunch more lessons where that came from in the next video i'll go through the process of texturing rocket randy and then also cover a few other topics on how to texture using photographs and scanned fabrics and things like that so i'm going to cover a broad range of topics that weren't necessarily put directly into play for rocket randy but maybe of some use for you and your own projects if you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.